Today I want to catch all of Ash's Pokemon available in Pokemon Scarlet, but they have to be shiny, that's 44 shinies in total. We'll be using different methods like outbreaks, picnic resets and more to try and obtain all Pokemon available in the base game, the teal mask and the indigo disc. Here's how it went. To start off with, we obviously have to tackle his main Pokemon, and that's Pikachu. Well in our case, we're going to start off our hunt with Pichu. By making a sandwich that for some reason completely disappears as I throw ingredients to the void, we can get electric sparkling power and encounter power. This lets us isolate Pichu quite often. After around 20 minutes of running around in the grass, I see a slightly darker Pichu staring at me. Basculegion confirms it's shiny, and it is. That's the first shiny of the run. After we catch the Pichu, we can shove loads of kelper berries down its throat to max out its happiness pretty quickly. This evolves it into Ash's first Pokemon of the run, shiny Pikachu. And that's one out of 44 down, but there's plenty more to go. Looking at my map and we're in luck, there's a Fanfi mass out break up. So we head to Fanfi and we wipe out the species basically. After a very very long time considering the odds, we stumble upon a lighter looking one. It's actually easier to see than I thought it would be. With a quick ball we capture it, then we give Fanfi some XP large to evolve it into the absolutely beautiful shiny Donphan. One of my favourite shinies. Just look how happy he is to join the team. And that's shiny 2 out of 44 already. So it's a new day and I check my outbreaks as always and there's a Star Raptor one which is perfect. Unfortunately for me, by the time I've cleared some of them, it's already dark and they just stopped spawning. I decided though with the rest of my sandwich to head and hunt for Noivern or Hulucha. After around 30 minutes of running around, we find this beautiful luchador bird staring at me. I hatched one of these back in X and Y and it took me over 3,000 eggs, so I'm quite happy with how quick this was. We then catch our third member to the team and isn't he just great? I now decide to try the picnic reset method and go for a dragon type shiny. I've seen this method on YouTube and I want to give it a try. This means when you set up a picnic, you despawn all the Pokemon around you and then when you come out of the pit and ick, the fresh encounters. After a little while of resetting, a shiny gibble comes darting towards us begging to be caught. So I do. We capture it in a quick ball and that's shiny number four. Unfortunately, he's going to stay a gibble but I don't really like shiny Garchomp anyway. We're making great progress. Gibble looks fantastic. That's four out of 44 down. While I still have some of the effects of my dragon shiny sandwich from getting gibble, I quickly fly over to where you can spawn Noibat and Noivern and I kid you not, watch this. I set up one picnic to start spawning some of the Pokemon in and I notice a Noibat flying away with what looks like black ears. We've got a rush and lo and behold it is in fact a shiny Noibat. That was super quick. With another critical capture we claim our second dragon of the run. We shove some XP down his throat and evolve him to the beautiful Noivern and that is a beautiful shiny. At this point I finally got around to finishing the Teal Mass DLC and I notice that there's a Munchlax outbreak. After around 30 minutes this happens while I'm sort of of semi AFK. By the time I even notice and run over, I get ambushed by a regular Munchlax and because of this encounter, it disappears. I forgot to save two and that is my first failed shiny of Scarlet and Violet. But this didn't stop me. No, it did not. This made me want to reclaim it as fast as possible. By fast, I mean it took me around four more hours before finally I saw a Munchlax that was a bit more blue than the others. By giving him some berries that reduce his special attack but increase his friendliness, we can evolve him into Snorlax and I'm super super happy. So is Snorlax as he falls asleep straight away and that shiny 6 out of 44. Deciding to keep the blue theme going if we head to a very specific area in Paldea as the clock hits dusk we can find Lycan Rock and a lot of them. We only have a few minutes of dusk before it goes to night so we've got to pray and just as night is about to fall we can see a blue Lycan Rock dusk as the midnight Lycan Rock starts spawning in right behind him. That was lucky. With a quick and easy capture we can add yet another fantastic shiny to our team putting us now at a solid 7 out of 44. Deciding to go the complete opposite of colours it's time to hunt for a certain pink bug that being Heracross. I managed to find a Heracross outbreak and after around half an hour of hunting I turn around and a bright pink bulb pops up. We catch it in a pink heel ball and I love this shiny. That's shiny number 8 out of 44. It's time to hunt the only shiny Ash has which is not Tal. However it's a little bit easier to find a Hoot Hoot. After around Around two hours of hunting, we find a little golden blob running around. Now I make sure though to save before every single shiny after what happened with Munchlax. We get a quick capture and we've got ourselves a shiny Hoot Hoot. After leveling it up, we get our shiny Noctowl and that's another shiny to add to the list. That puts us now at a solid 9 out of 44. Let's go for some fighting types next. There's a really good spot here for Mankeys. However, of course,
course, just like Munchlax, I failed my first one. I went to save when I saw the little green monkey pop up, but I put a picnic instead. This means I despawned the shiny. How sad. However, another one appeared as soon as I came out of this picnic, but I didn't hit record as everything happened so quick. But that's the fastest reclaim ever. With some XP candies, we can evolve him into the scary looking primate, giving us our 10th shiny. I was now planning on going for Lucario by hunting Raiolu, but there's actually a promotion going on right now, where from a mystery gift, you can get a shiny Lucario. So I'm going to be counting him for this challenge, because why not? By typing in the code shiny buddy, we can get ourselves a Lucario. And honestly, this was great timing, and that gives us 11 out of 44. With us now having 10 shinies from encounters, outbreaks, and picnic resetting, the new DLC, the Indigo Disc, has just dropped. With that, we have access to every single Pokemon starter, which we can hunt in the wild. That's crazy. So this is where I want to start going next. Deciding to leave Charmander for a bit, I want to go for Litten. I just love shiny Incineroar. There's a really good spot that people found where you can set up a picnic and mass spawn in Litten. However, even with really good odds, Litten did not want to shine. It took me many, many sandwiches and many more hours, but eventually I spot a little white kitten roaming around, and it's just perfect. We capture it pretty quickly, and we check its nature. It's got an adamant nature too, which is fantastic for Incineroar. We shove some candies down his throat, and this gives us a shiny Toracat, and then finally, a shiny Incineroar. Absolutely great shiny, and probably one of my favourite out of Gen 7. On to the next starter now. I do want to throw in this shiny Delibird that I obviously failed because I have no sense of what I'm doing sometimes. Typical me. The next day, I decide to check my outbreaks, and I can see a Swaddle one up. That's great for us. After knocking out 60 of them, I get to work. We run around for quite a while before I find a little gimmick. If I zoom my camera all the way out and hop over from Applin Hills to the outbreak, I can spawn Swaddle in and out. The downside is Swaddle is so small. How do I know if it's even shiny? I decide going forward to go and have a proper look at them before resetting the spawns. As I jump over and head down again, a little one just catches my eye. And honestly, how could you tell? I'm so glad I decided to do this now. And with that, that's a shiny Swaddle. We give him some candy and lots of berries for friendship to evolve into Swadloon, then Leovanny. And I am not a big fan of the shiny, I must say. It's pretty bad compared to Swaddle and Swadloon, but that's 13 out of 44. I decide to go back to Univer now to grab some more starters. And after a few minutes of running about, I see a Bulbasaur with a slightly greener tint. I missed the sparkles thanks to gouging fire's sheer size, but I didn't think I'd notice Bulbasaur at all. Honestly, my eyes always play tricks on me when looking for shinies. This was a nice quick shiny to get, and he's staying a Bulbasaur forever. Also, every time I've used a grass sandwich, I've tried to get a Turtwig so far, but he's just not shining. So, with it being Christmas time now, Pokemon have made some new mass outbreaks, one of them being Dratini. They have increased shiny odds too, and they spawn everywhere. So let's go get ourselves a shiny. I find a nice little pool of outbreaks just on top of the freezing mountain and get to work with a sandwich to knock out as many of the Dratinis as I can. But before we can even get to max odds, I turn around and there is a pink Dratini sitting in the pool. And that is one of my favourite shinies too. We quickly capture it and then we level it up to Dragonair, but I'm all out of candies. We'll finish off the evolution after. With some of my shiny dragon sandwich still active, I head to go and hunt an elusive target I couldn't find yet. Goomy. There's a fantastic spot near the start of the game where only Goomy spawn in. I spend some time running around and with only a minute on the sandwich left, hiding away in the bushes to my left, is something golden. And that is definitely a shiny Goomy. Perfect timing and not with any time to spare. That's two dragons down. I do a quick raid and level up our pink Dragonair to its true form, the now fully green and powerful Dragonite. Isn't it amazing? And we also feed some candies to our little gold Gloomy to evolve it into Sligoo, but it's not raining anywhere I tried searching. So while I wait for it to rain, I'm deciding on what to do next. I then look at my map and I see a Charmander outbreak. So we knock out 60 of the little fire starters and we eat a fire type sandwich. And my luck's been pretty good so far, but this is where it gets even better. Look how quick this takes me. I do one quick run around basically. Then I despawn all the Charmanders. Then I spawn them all in again. And as I turn around, a lighter Charmander is there. A quick save and yes, that is shiny Charmander. His mates are obviously protecting him and don't want him to leave as they're forming a shield around me to not catch him. But I'm sorry, this little guy's coming with me. I now evolve Charmander into Charmeleon, then into a fantastic looking Charizard. While in the starter mood, I decide I will not leave this spot until I have a shiny Turtwig. So that's our next hunt. So I sit here for a very, very, very long time. And eventually, I encounter the Turtwig that I've spent so much time searching for. So many sandwiches. And we finally have it. 
and it's beautiful. I won't evolve it just yet as we still have some time left on our grass sandwich, 22 minutes to be exact. Let's try and get a treco. So I head to a different biome and spend some time searching. As I go behind, this rock is unmissable and that is definitely one of the best shinies for a starter in my opinion. We catch it and we're making a serious dent into Ash's Pokemon right now. I then evolve Turtwig into a shiny Grottle and then the not so great looking shiny Torterra. Then I evolve shiny Trico into shiny Grovile and then finally into shiny Sceptile. Putting us at a solid 18 out of 44 shinies. With a few grass starters down I decide to go and hunt something different. First I want a Sandile and there's a fantastic place to find one of these back in the main region of Paldea. Atop this desert mountain we can make a dark type sandwich and Sandile will mass spawn on the platform. Wait, that was instant. That is a yellow sand dial down there. After encountering the little yellow croc, we then evolve it into Crocorock, and then we give it a few more candies, and we evolve Crocorock into Crocodile, and this thing looks awesome. With getting sand dial so quick, Scraggy is a fantastic target for us to look for now. It did take me a few sandwiches after, but we had an outbreak too, and a little over two hours, we find a Scraggy that looks slightly darker, and honestly, I was worried it wouldn't be noticeable, but it was. Roaring Moon confirms it's a shiny, and then we catch it, bringing our total count to 20 shiny Pokemon. We're making fantastic progress, and there's not many non-starters to go for, so let's keep the momentum going and go for an amazing flying type. But we start, it actually finally starts raining. This means we can finally evolve Sligu into a beautiful golden Gudra, and that is another Pokemon fully finished. So I was here for a pretty long time, spawning in Star Raptors like there's no tomorrow, and it just wasn't happening until I just started a new sandwich, and I couldn't even save before it spawned in immediately and just like that we have ourselves a shiny star raptor on the team too with so much time left on the normal type sandwich i don't want to let it go to waste so we head on over to the terrarium in Unova to look for a certain bull pokemon now i'm a bit worried here is there is a lot of other normal type encounters we could get never mind that is definitely a shiny tauro so that was super fast too i'll take some increased luck and yeah my fps did take a massive tank here too but we picked up ourselves a nice green tauros to add to the collection i decided to head back to area zero to start spawning in talon flames there's a really good spot at the top of the mountain where you can actually spawn in quite a few at a time i was a bit worried i wouldn't be able to see it so i despawned them in and out and on the last one to take off that is definitely a different shade of red and yes that is a shiny talon flame how beautiful with another super quick shiny i want to keep my look going when it's this great so i head back to the indigo disc to hopefully get a chimchar by resetting a picnic i can mass spawn in chimchar and score bunny so it's really a 50 50 on who i would get and yes that is an orange looking bunny. Not our target, but we'll catch it anyway. My next target is Buizel, and there's a mass outbreak for it in Paldea. By this point, I was getting ready to call it a night as I was hunting all day, and we made some super great progress in the total. Just as I'm ready to head off by even letting my Roaring Moon auto-battle a few Pokemon as I was that tired, I turn around, and it isn't extremely noticeable until you get close up, and we have a shiny Buizel. It was always meant to be, and this awoke me from my tired state, and with time still left on my sandwich, it'd be a shame to let it go to waste. I decided to just throw everything I got at maybe getting a total dial, but my first encounter was a shiny Bruxish literally as soon as I arrived at the lake. It's not a target or one we need, but it's a shiny nonetheless, so to the collection it goes. After swimming around for quite a while, I got lucky again. No outbreak, just a shiny Totodile waiting to be captured, and one of my favourite in the lines. Unfortunately, we won't get a Feraligator, but Totodile is just perfect as he is, and I do think that's pretty lucky with only 3 minutes left on our sandwich too, and we got it without an outbreak. It's a new day, and there's a new shiny to get, and this time we're hunting Gligar. There's a great spot in Kitakimi where you can spawn in a lot of Gligar with the picnic reset method. This didn't take too long, as the amount of encounters you can get is so high, but after a reset, a vibrant blue Gligar Gligar appears and it's impossible to miss. Such a great shiny. This Gligar we can actually evolve though. If we level it up at night while holding a Razor Fang, it'll evolve into Gliscor. Now usually I love this shiny but something is a bit off in this generation but it's still another one down in Ash's collection. I found a really good area to find a little certain mint bird now. In the Indigo Disc Central Plaza you can get quick and easy resets by just walking in and out of the savannah and the plaza biome. However, as easy as it is to get many many encounters 
hours, RNG is still RNG. And this took me hours upon hours. Eventually though, after another reset, hiding in the grass is our green shiny bird, Rowlet. That will always be a Rowlet. And I really like the colours of this. Deciding to test RNG once more, I did one more reset and we get a second Rowlet, almost instantly. This took me hours to find the first one and then I find back to back Rowlets. That's not bad as now I can give myself a shiny Decidueye. With a couple of starters down, I decide to go and picnic reset for snow run. Now we only need a male, so this could potentially be a very long hunt depending on how our luck goes. There's another great spot back in Paldea where we can spawn some clusters of snow run. I'm just hoping we can get a male. After around an hour or two of searching, a beautiful blue snow run appears and it is male. Now I apologise for my Pokemon for taking up most of the screen. Only one face for snow run though, so that's perfect. We level it up and we get ourselves a shiny Glalie and I love the red on this thing. That's another shiny down. Back to the starters in the indigo disc. I hunt for Tepig next, one of the last few fire types we need. Embor is one of my favourite shinies with a whole blue scheme going for it. But Tepig's is a little bit underwhelming compared. Thankfully, when we find it, we can evolve it. So after roaming around the biome for about an hour, I find an okay place I can just reset like we did with Rowlet by hopping in and out of Central Plaza. Once I've found this little area, it doesn't take too long before a slightly lighter Tepig spawns in just as I turn my camera. We capture it and then we can evolve it into Pig Knight and that's another one down. Back to the score Bunny and Chimchar location now. It took me a very long, long time without any shinies, but as I do my usual lap to double check, as my eyes are not the best with my old age now, I see a shiny Chimchar. This is one of the starters we can finally get to its max evolution too. After a nice capture, we can evolve it first into Monferno, then into the powerful Infernape. And I love its stance in this game and its flames. Such a great Pokemon. And the gold gleams too. I'm really happy with this shiny. Next up is a ghost type we need to hunt. By eating a ghost type sandwich and roaming around Paldea, we can encounter only families of Gravestone and Haunter Ghastly, and the occasional Bramble Ghast too. After spending only a few minutes roaming around and encountering lots of Pokemon at quite a quick rate too, as we head down the hill, I notice a bluish looking Ghastly. My FPS decided to take an absolute tank here and drop to around 5, but that's Scarlet and Violet for you. Infernape confers it shiny, and we get ourselves a shiny Ghastly. We then evolve it into Haunter too, but we need it to be a Gengar. After some help from my good friend BP Nuzlox, who agrees to not steal my Haunter and send it back, we have ourselves a shiny Gengar and now we're making insane progress. I decide to hunt an Ice type next and one that Ash let go, Lapras, although we might end up with a few Dugongs first. So in the Ice biome we can picnic reset on a big ice slab to mass spawn Ice types. After a whole sandwich is nearly up, I see a goldish type of Dugong and I honestly didn't think it would be recognisable, but it really is. So we capture it even though it's not our target and that's phase one for Lapras. I wasn't even ready to record as I called it a day, but upon loading back up my game the next day, a shiny Husui and Quillfish was just stood there waiting to be taken. I mean, I'll take it. Phase 2 of Lapras. Okay, we finally got it after approximately 20 seconds of our sandwich starting, and this shiny is great. I will most certainly take such a quick hunt as a few have been painful, but today my shiny look so far has been absolutely incredible. I want to continue getting the stars now, and in the savannah biome with a grass sandwich, we can isolate mainly Executor and Snivy at the top right of the map. So this is where I begin to hunt. Without an outbreak, this could be rough to find, but I'm not leaving here until we have Snivy. They are small, so I was scared I'll miss it running about. But of course we find a shiny Executor first, so phase one for Snivy done. On to phase two. After a couple more sandwiches and a lot more running about, I eventually notice Snivy hiding in the grass. Our Pokemon confirms it's a shiny and we get ourselves a shiny Snivy. And honestly, that's not too bad only getting one on Executor, I've seen a lot worse. Unfortunately, there's no superior for us this time, but Shiny Snivy is great anyways, and this leaves only 10 Shinies left to find. Lucky for us, we still have a Chikorita outbreak up at the same time, so it's a great time to continue our star hunt. After knocking out 60, we spend a bit of time running around and waiting until we finally come across a Chikorita hiding behind a bush. A quick save, and we find ourselves a Shiny Chikorita. We then evolve it into the glorious bay leaf, and that's another grass starter down to add to the collection. Collection. While we're in the tropical biome, it's time to go for yet another shiny starter, Froakie. And there's another great spot to get this. But, of course, I failed one while zoning in and out, and I didn't record it, so my apologies. So that's three failed shinies in total so far this run. However, not long later, we find another shiny frog, Froakie. We can then evolve it into a shiny frogadier, and then a shiny Greninja. 
bringing the total count to 36 out of 44 Pokemon, and what better shiny than a shiny Greninja. So it's a new day and there's an Oshawa outbreak, but I also came across this beautiful random shiny Seedra, not the target, but as always I'll capture it. So I get to work and knock out about 60 Oshawas. This took me many, many sandwiches. I tried running about, I tried resetting in the cave to try and find the quickest way to get them to spawn in, but it just wasn't meant to be for a while, until I stumble upon this little guy. I didn't expect him to stand out so much, but he really does, and he's perfect. He'll be staying as an Oshawa, but that's okay with me, and that's shiny number 37. To take a break from starters, I head to a Torkoal outbreak back in Paldea, and I've been going for this on and off between fire sandwiches and leftovers, but I haven't had any luck with it really, and I've devoted a good amount of time to him too. So I was pretty surprised when within one minute, literally one minute of starting these outbreaks, this spawned in, and this shiny is incredible. I love how the smoke constantly comes out of Torkoal too, and that's another extremely fast shiny. Now to look for a purple sludge, well we need it to be green. I started off by the lighthouse, which seems to be a great spot to spawn in Grimer, however in Lavencia there is a much, much better way to mass spawn these in. You just step into the town, step out, and you can quickly see a lot of Grimers this way. So would you believe if I told you that this method took me over 5 sandwiches, until eventually we encounter this green sludge. It doesn't look like much, but when we evolve it into a muck, whose first instinct is to go and try and take on a Luxio, and I love muck, so I'm really happy with this one. Now, in this series, Ash had a Larvitar, temporarily, and according to Bulbapedia and other sources, it's classed as Ash had that Pokemon, so why don't we catch one too? There is an amazing spot in Paldea in a cave, where if you stand at the right spot, Larvitar will literally jump out of the wall, and you, and you can encounter so, so many this way. However, once again, the odds was against me, and I was here for quite a while considering, but eventually, I noticed with my camera, a really green one jump out of the wall. Now the issue is just getting to him. He has an army of Larvitar protecting the shiny. So we send out our Greninja to fight off the protective wall, and then we can catch ourselves a shiny Larvitar. With only a few shinies left to get, I now tackle what is known as possibly one of the hardest encounters to get in the Indigo Disc DLC, and that's Cyndaquil. The reason being it spawns in one place and one place only. Without a sandwich, you might not even see one, and getting an outbreak here is super rare. But we do have a technique. By making a sandwich to increase the encounters and standing in a certain spot in this cave, we can slowly but surely see Cyndaquil spawn in. And not long after, we have this beautiful brown Cyndaquil down here. And honestly, I was expecting this to be a pain, but it only took me a couple of tries. We do get to evolve it, but not into the mighty Typhlosion, but Quilava instead, and that's shiny 41. Now onto the final three shinies. We need a water type that took me many, many outbreaks and many hours over the course of this video to find. That's right, Corefish. I tried three different locations of outbreaks to finally get one where more than three appear. So I clear them out one by one and I tried to see if picnic resetting for them to spawn was faster, but it wasn't. Eventually, I decided on running back and forth from the wall and there we have it, a very standout purpley corefish. And I like this shiny. I don't like Crawdents, but luckily we get to keep him as a corefish, so I'm happy with that. With the challenge coming down to the final shinies, it's time to take on the last starter we need, Squirtle. I managed to find an outbreak by using an encounter counter water power sandwich and all that's left to do was wait and even though it has a green shell i didn't expect it to stand out as much as it did with a final encounter we have our last shiny starter of the challenge squirtle for the final pokemon i actually can't get this in pokemon scarlet it's a violet exclusive apom now i know he traded it away but just to make sure i've covered all avenues we're gonna hunt it anyways so the only way i can get one in my game is by the masuda method which requires breeding with a foreign pokemon so that's what we do we get to work breeding Ditto and an Ambipom, collecting batch of eggs and hatching them. Then after 426 eggs, this happens. A shiny pink Apom, and it's a fantastic one to end the challenge on. I forgot how much I like Masuda Method hunting. With that, we've caught all 44 Pokemon available to Ash in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. There's only one thing left to do, and that's check for marks. If you don't know, marks can be randomly on a Pokemon, and when using sandwiches, you get title power that increases the chance of a mark, so let's check them. So our first Pokemon is a Primeape with an uncommon mark. Second, we have Snorlax with a partner mark. Third is Lapras with an uncommon mark. Fourth, we have Bayleaf with the Dawn mark. Fifth, we have Noctowl with the uncommon mark again, although it seems pretty common. 
Sixth, Infernape has a snowy mark, giving him the title of Infernape the Snow Throw Licker. Sixth, we have Staraptor the Grumpy with the peeved mark. Seventh, Gibble the Early Riser with a dawn mark. Eighth is Lucario with the mark you get from the event. Ninth, we have Greninja the Treasure Hunter. And last but not least, Snivy with the Early Riser and the Door Mark, giving us a total of 10 marks out of 44 Pokemon. And that's it, I successfully caught every single one of Ash's Pokemon available in Scarlet and Violet, but Shiny. I do hope you guys enjoyed this, as it's a pretty new venture for me to do sort of Shiny hunting videos, but I enjoyed making it, and I really hope you guys enjoyed watching it too. Leave a like and subscribe if you're new. As always, I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you in the next one.